Thank you. Medicine Sans Frontier, or MSF, is an international medical humanitarian organization which provides impartial medical assistance in 70 countries those affected by armed conflict, epidemics, natural disasters, or exclusion from healthcare. MSF is able to speak about the relationship between intellectual property rules and access to medicines, and about the role India has played in enabling access to life-saving medicines for millions. In 2001, MSF faced what seemed like insurmountable barriers in meeting critical health needs and saving the lives of our patients. In particular, we faced an astronomical $10,000 per patient per year price tag for life-saving HIV medicines, which barred millions from treatment and prevented us from being able to reach more than a very limited number of people. But a solution was found in India. The legal safeguards introduced in the country's 1970 patent law excluded patents on life-saving medicines and resulted in boosting the manufacture of low-cost quality generic medicines for a fraction of the existing price. In 2001, the cost to treat someone with HIV fell by over 96%, literally overnight, to $360 per person per year. Since then, generic competition has seen the cost fall even further. As a result, nearly 10 million people worldwide today receive treatment for HIV, many of those from the US-funded PEPFAR and other US government-funded programs like the Global Fund. India's role in this treatment scale has been and continues to be a critical one. As a pharmacy to the developing world, and as the biggest source of quality generic medicines, governments and donors such as the United States rely heavily on Indian generic medicines. According to the latest data, 98% of the medicines used by PEPFAR rely on low-cost generic medicines produced in India. This represents important cost savings that stretches the United States' significant investment in global health. According to the last U.S. government budget, in fact, in fiscal year 2014, the U.S. government investment amounts to more than $7 billion just for HIV, TB, and malaria alone. The generous contributions of the U.S. government in the global fight against HIV have been pivotal in bringing us to the point where we can, for the first time, talk about reversing the AIDS epidemic as a feasible policy objective. We welcome new ambitions and efforts on the part of the U.S. government to translate the new science that HIV treatment is, in fact, prevention into policies that will scale up access to treatment. But the ability to implement these policies is directly linked to the ability of patients, treatment providers, and donors to access medicines at affordable prices. HIV is just one example. We need access to affordable treatment for a variety of medical problems that affect our patients, including both communicable and non-communicable diseases. International trade and intellectual property rules govern what it is governments can and can't do to protect public health and access to medicines. Member states of the WTO, including the United States and India, have agreed to these rules which set standards for what deserves a patent and for how long a patent should last. In 2001, WTO member states, including the United States and India, also signed the Doha Declaration on Trips in Public Health, which enshrines the right of governments to implement safeguards and flexibilities to protect public health. In recent years, the United States has made additional commitments to recognize the important health. For example, the 2007 New Trade Policy, the United States recognized the importance of public health safeguards for developing countries. India's patent law and its judiciary are under pressure for policies which we consider are entirely in line with its obligations as a WTO member. In compliance with its international obligations, India has started to provide significant patent protection for medicines. Between 2005 and 2008, India granted over 2,000 patents for medicines and continues to grant patents today, including on new antibiotics for TB treatments, which we urgently need in our medical operations. Treatment providers are already seeing the impact of these patents, which delay generic competition, keeping newer medicines out of affordable reach. Take HIV, for example, again. Although first-line treatment has benefited from important price reductions, more people need to be switched to newer and more effective medicines. MSF has started to switch HIV patients who develop drug resistance onto new medicines, which are expensive because they are under patent. At our clinic in Mumbai in India, Salvage regimen drug Raltegravir is prohibitively priced at nearly $2,000 per person per year. New medicines to treat hepatitis C, which affects about 180 million people worldwide, provide another example. New medicines entering the market, including the recently approved Sofosfavir, will be priced by brand name companies as much as $1,000 per pill in the United States. While it is likely that these medicines will be less expensive in India, we know that without generic competition, affordable and effective treatment for millions of people in India and other countries will not be possible. While India does grant patent monopolies to a vast number of pharmaceutical products, it is trying to strike a balance between providing intellectual property protection and having the flexibility to protect public health. It does so in at least two ways. The first way by defining strict, uh, is by defining strict patentability criteria. Under TRIPS, governments have the right to define scope of patentability 
what does and does not deserve a patent in a way that addresses the needs of their own citizens, as long as they abide by international agreements. The United States recently contributed to its own definition when the Supreme Court reaffirmed strict patentability criteria for gene patents. India has adopted a standard of patenting that is stricter than the US or Europe, but which is in line with international trade rules. There are numerous examples of how India's application of strict standards of patentability has resulted in improved access to medicines. For example, a secondary patent application on the cancer drug imatinib by Novartis was rejected because it was for a modified form of an already known substance. Novartis challenged this decision. When the Indian Supreme Court upheld the decision of the Patent Office last year, it was legally validating a choice by the Indian Parliament to better define standards of patentability for medicines. While a patent should support <coughs> innovation, in reality the overwhelming majority of patents are applied for incremental developments on existing medicines. In contrast to India's stricter patentability criteria, the U.S. has patent standards which allow for the granting of secondary patents for very obvious modifications of existing medicines. This practice, known as evergreening, acts to delay generic competition and keeps prices high, and is a common tactic by the pharmaceutical industry to extend their monopoly in drugs beyond the original patent term of 20 years. A recent study found that evergreening extends patent protection by an average of more than six years, Allowing companies to extend patent protection keeps prices high uh, for U.S. consumers and the U.S. government. For example, the patent on the active ingredient in imatinib, marketed as Gleevec, the cancer drug at the heart of the Novartis case, will expire next year in the United States. However, secondary patents will extend the market monopoly in the United States until 2018, preventing more affordable generics from entering the market. The United States has recognized that excessive patenting can undermine innovation and American economic productivity across many sectors. President Obama's State of the Union address reflects this in his calls for reform of the U.S. patent system and limits the costly patent litigation that, quote, allows our businesses to stay focused on innovation. The U.S. government continues to make adjustments to its patent system to achieve a better balance between rewarding innovation and providing for public health. It should allow other governments like India to do the same. The measures taken by the Indian government do not undermine rewarding innovation, but rather curtail the worst excesses of it, ensuring that companies focus on their energies on scientific innovation and research for new drugs. When it comes to incentivizing innovation, determining the right balance for governments to strike in deciding what deserves a patent and what does not is a complex matter. MSF supports the Indian government's decision that patents should only be granted for innovation that satisfy rigorous criteria to assess the inventive step and have accomplished something significant in terms of therapeutic efficacy. Secondly, compulsory licenses are another re legally recognized safeguard that allows a country to balance intellectual property protection with the right to protect public health. The United States has threatened or used compulsory licenses for medicines in the past and stated that it would look to use them again in the future if necessary. The Indian Patent Office has had the ability of using compulsory licenses for many years but unlike the United States and others, and despite the unaffordable medicine prices charged by multinational drug companies, had never issued one until very recently. In 2012, the country issued its first, and so far only compulsory license in the interest of public health, when faced with a price tag for a cancer drug, which kept it out of reach of 98% of the Indian population. Granting the compulsory license reduced the price by 97%, and also led to the payment of a 7% royalty to the patent holder as recognition for its innovation. MSF hopes that where access barriers exist, compulsory licenses will be issued for the newest drugs to address health priorities, enabling affordable generic versions which will be available not only in India, but also in the rest of the developing world. With new HIV, cancer, and hepatitis C medicines priced beyond the reach of patients and treatment providers, the use of public health safeguards in India will be necessary to ensure that medicines are affordable to the millions who require treatment. MSF recognizes the need to reward innovation and the need to finance research and development. We are a humanitarian medical organization that needs and welcomes biomedical innovation to improve treatment options for our patients. R&D is important and someone needs to pay. However, the reality is that we're relying on high prices for medicines, backed up by intellectual property monopolies, is a flawed paradigm to pay for medical innovation. It creates both access problems due to high prices, and at the same time, it does not stimulate innovation for many of the diseases affecting people in developing countries, where patients have limited purchasing power and the private sector sees no incentive. Today, we basically have a trade-off between innovation and access. If you have wide access as the industry, you aren't supporting innovation. New approaches to medical innovation are demonstrating that significant medical breakthroughs with access are possible. In particular, models of innovation that break the link 
between the cost of research and development and the high price of the end product. In conclusion, every country has the right to take steps to increase access to medicines and implement the patent system in line with its public health needs. We strongly object to the pressure exerted by the U.S. on developing countries, including India, for using legal flexibilities to protect public health. India's measures are fully compliant with global trade rules and with the laws of India. These attacks undermine the global trading system as well as the independence of the Indian judiciary. More importantly, the measures India has implemented to safeguard public health are of critical importance to protect the, millions of, of, the health of millions of people across the world. India has been nicknamed the pharmacy to the developing world in recognition of this fact. Losing this pharmacy would be devastating for patients and for treatment providers like MSF. MSF urges this panel to evaluate the decisions made by the Indian government under international trade rules, taking into consideration its impact on public health. Thank you. Thank you.